Hello and welcome back. Welcome back to another half hour segment and let's get started right away. Vocabulary, are you ready? 25 palabras, 25 words, and I will s go through the entire list first, every word, and then I'll go back, I'll go back, and we will start looking at each word individually, and we'll expand on, the, on each one. And hopefully, by expanding on each word, you'll get a feeling, get a feeling for the word, and you will begin to like the word and you will make the decision to assimilate the word into your normal English. Are you ready? Number one, cito, compromiso, an appointment. I have an appointment tomorrow with the doctor. I have an appointment with the dentist. With, tengo una cita con el médico mañana. I have an appointment with the doctor. Enorme, huge, huge, enormous, huge. Masacre, igual que en español, massacre. Pero acentuando la primera sílaba, massacre, massacre, okay. Mediocre, mediocre. Un masacre mediocre sería mediocre massacre. Pero vemos atrás después. In absoluto, not at all. Okay, are you angry? No, not at all. In absoluto, no estoy enfadado. Para nada. No, not at all. Agotado, exhausted. I am so tired. I am completely exhausted. Ahora bien, no podemos comprar ese libro porque está agotado. Out of the book is not exhausted. The book is out of stock. Literalmente fuera de stock o de existencias. Out of stock. Un montón is a pile. Tengo un montón de papeles que firmar. I have a pile of papers to sign. Prometedor. Promising. This new television station, Aprende Inglés TV, is a very promising initiative and is very promising for your English. Promising. Adecuado, apropiado, proper. Speak with the proper accent. Okay, speak with proper pronunciation. Proper, appropriate. Okay, propuesta, a proposal. Uh, can you prepare a proposal on that subject? I'm very interested in what you're talking about, but I would like a proposal por escrito. Una propuesta por escrito. I'd like a proposal in writing. Okay, arroz, rice. Okay, rice pudding, paella is made of rice. People throw rice at the weddings, rice. Okay, satisfecho, satisfied, pleased. I'm satisfied with your progress. I'm pleased with your progress. We'll come back to this word, I hope, later. Hombro, shoulder, I have two shoulders. My shoulders are articulations that allow me, in part, to articulate my arm. Interesting appendage, my arm. I have several articulations on my arm. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six articulations. My shoulder, my elbow, my wrist, and one, two, three knuckles. Yes, okay, and I can articulate my hands, my wrist, my elbow, and my arm. And my shoulder is a very important articulation. It's a very important joint. Okay, shoulder, shoulder. I have two shoulders. Los hombros de los soldados, the soldiers' shoulders. Por lo tanto, thus, therefore. Okay, amenaza, threat. Is that a threat? Me estás amenazando? Are you threatening me? Yo no acepto amenazas. I don't accept. Threats. Threat. Okay. We'll come back later. Aconsejar. Asesorar. Advise me. To advise. Let me advise you. Let me give you some advice. Let me advise you. Let me give you some advice. Beneficiarse de. To benefit from. To profit from. Are you benefiting from this class? Are you benefiting from my program? Are you benefiting from this new television station? Are you benefiting from my effort? To benefit from, okay? To profit from. Precisely must to benefit from. Retrasar, demorar, to delay. Don't delay solving the problem of the English language. Do it now. Get it out of the way now, okay? Don't put it off. No lo vayas aplazando. Ataca ahora. A frontal assault. Right now. 
Okay. Don't delay. Okay. Primero, hacer una previsión. To forecast. Let's make a forecast. Let's forecast the sales for this year. <coughs> Let's forecast the future cash flows. Okay. To forecast. Llevarse bien con. To get along with. Hay dos formas. La forma más británica y la forma más bien americana. Pero se solapan. To get on with, to get along with. I get along with my boss. I get along with the people in this studio. I get along with the producer and director of this program. I get along with my, the students I often bring here. I get along with the floor technician, Marco. I get along with the makeup artist, Rita. I get along with everybody. I even get along with my wife. Me llevo bien con mujer. I get along with my wife, yeah. I get along with my children. I get along with everybody. I have never met a person I didn't get along with. Y los británicos muchas veces dicen get on. I get on with my mother-in-law. I get on with my father-in-law, etc. All right. Recoger, to pick up. Si se me cae algo al suelo, I pick it up. To pick it up. All right. Also, if you go to the airport, sometimes you go to the airport to pick somebody up. Somebody is arriving at the airport, and you go and you pick the person up. In Spanish, you say, voy a ir a buscar a Pepa al aeropuerto. Pues, in English, no. You don't go to an airport normally to look for somebody. Now, if you receive a telephone call from Pepa, and Pepa says, Richard. Yes, Pepa, I'm at the airport. Oh, and I'm lost. I'm lost completely lost. I don't know where to go. I don't know where the exit is. I don't know where the entrance is. I don't know where anything is. Can you come and look for me? Entonces sí iría al aeropuerto para buscar a Pepa, porque Pepa está perdida. Pero normally, when Pepa arrives at the airport, I go there to meet her, or I go there to pick her up. Okay? You can say both. Meet normally means when you go to the airport and you wait and you formally receive a person, ceremonially sometimes, and that's to meet somebody at the airport. Now, often you go simply to pick the person up uh, so that that person doesn't need to catch a taxi or the bus or the subway. Okay, to pick up, to pick her up, to pick him up, to pick them up. We'll come back. All right, depender de confiar in, to rely on. Listen. I promise I will come here every day to teach you English, and you can rely on me. Come rain or shine. If the sun is shining, I'll be here. If it's raining, I'll be here. If it's snowing, I'll be here. If it's hailing, granizando, I'll be here. If it's sleeting, que es caer agua nieve, I'll come here. If it's foggy, completely th a very thick fog, if it's really foggy, I'll be here. Come rain or shine, I'll be here. You can rely on me. I'm a reliable person. Not even wild horses can keep me from coming here to teach you English. So, consider me a very reliable teacher, and you can rely on me for learning English. I'll be here every day to help you. Next one, afeitarse, to shave. Por favor, no digáis, to shave myself. It sounds very strange, okay? To shave. Every day I shave. Some people don't shave every day. Some people shave every other day. Un día sí, otro no. Some people shave once a week. Some people shave once every two weeks. Some people sh leave a four-day beard, okay? To shave. Some people don't shave here and they leave a mustache. To shave, all right? Women often shave their legs, okay? Now, trampa. Trap. Okay, es una trampa. Be careful, it's a trap. Don't go in there. It's a trap. And finally, testigo, witness. If you see something, you're a witness to that. If you see a crime, if you see somebody commit a crime, then you're a witness. Testigo, ocular. You're an eyewitness. Okay, 25 words. Let's go back. Number one, cita o compromiso. Tengo una cita con el médico. I have an appointment. I have an appointment, and concertar una cita is to make an appointment, not to do, to make an appointment. First you need to make an appointment. After you make the appointment, then you have an appointment. In your agenda or in your diary, you have an appointment. Now an appointment can be for business or for medical, dental, things like this. 
Appointments are formal. A date is una cita con una chica, un chico, para salir. That's a date, como una fecha. I have a date tonight with a beautiful woman, with my wife. I have a date. I have a date tonight. Now I have an appointment tomorrow with the dentist. I have an appointment the following day with the doctor. I have an appointment next week to see uh, one of the members of the current government, one of the subsecretaries. I have an appointment. I have a lunch appointment tomorrow. También con lunch y dinner puedes decir date, aunque no sea en plan afectivo. I have a dinner date tomorrow with the subsecretary of machine tool industries in Spain. I have a lunch date tomorrow with the uh, uh, vice chairman of a large corporation in Spain, a date. Now, eso no es appointment, but si es una reunión o una entrevista en una empresa, I have an appointment tomorrow. Okay, in your agenda, the Americans say agenda para agenda. The British say diary, igual que el diario donde pones tus cosas más íntimas, your diary. You open your diary and you have your appointments, okay? And you make, you write the appointments in your diary or in your agenda, okay? Appointments. And then you have appointments, okay? And tomorrow I have two appointments, one here. I have an appointment to come here and to teach you again. And I have an appointment to do some work on the radio, okay? Number two, enorme, okay, huge. There are two words for enorme. Enormous, like in Spanish, enormous. Fijaos la pronunciación, como para nosotros, for us. Enormous, nervous, jealous, envious, mountainous, okay? Do you understand? La OUS al final de las palabras, te los lo digo por tercera vez, creo, se pronuncia como nosotros, para nosotros, for us. Enormous, mountainous, superfluous, nervous, jealous, envious. Okay. Y enorme, enormous, or huge. Y se dice probablemente un poquito más huge. If there's a a fight between enormous and huge, huge will win 60% of the time, 60-40, in favor of huge. I have a huge problem. All right. You know, I have people, subordinates, working for me. And when a person calls me and in English says, Richard, we have a huge problem, I'm not usually worried. I said, well, what? What is it? Now, if somebody calls me and says, Richard, I think we have a small problem. I begin to uh, tremble, I begin to shake, okay, when they say a small problem. Huge, escrito uge con H al principio, y se pronuncia huge, ch, primero. El sonido de la G -E al final es como una ch pura castellana, huge, huge. Y al principio es como Hugh Grant. Empiezas diciendo Hugh Grant, el actor británico, pero no completas, dice huge, huge. We have a huge problem. Okay, it's hugely important for you to learn English. All right, your need to improve your English is huge. Number three, massacre. Yes, massacre, and over there. All right, massacre, Masac massacre. It was a massacre, all right? The Battle of Bailen, yes, where the French lost against the Spanish. It was a massacre, in favor of the Spanish, okay? A massacre. Uh, the uh, cavalry. The American cavalry, the American army, massacred, in some cases, the Indians. Es verbo también, igual que en castellano. Un masacre es producto de haber masacrado. Masacrar es to massacre, the same word. Y se, se escribe masacre, igual que en español, pero con doble S. Massacre, to massacre. I'm going to massacre your resistance to my language. Yeah. Entrar a saco, voy a entrar a saco into English or into resistencia. And I'm going to massacre your resistance. Okay, mediocre, mediocre, midi, midi, midi. Como la música, this is midi, mediocre. Oh, no, o bien sonora. Me mediocre, mediocre. It's, the spelling is exactly the same as in Spanish. Mediocre. There are two types of teachers. English teachers, for example. Good English teachers and mediocre. A mediocre teacher, uno más del montón. 
predominates. Maybe 90% of all the English teachers in the world are mediocre. They don't make an effort to insist that you learn. They don't try to make you work. They don't force you to produce and produce and produce English in front of them. And so they are mediocre teachers. And not only in English, in mathematics, in art, in literature, most teachers are mediocre because they don't love their profession or they don't know how to transmit with passion. Mediocre, all right, excellent, good, fair. Fair means kum si kum sa, ni fu ni fa. Fair, scritto como feria, oh me, my fair lady, fair. Excellent, good, fair, mediocre, bad. Okay, five categories. Excellent, fantastic, outstanding, wonderful, marvelous. The next is good, not bad. Fairly good, quite good. Fair, normal. Nothing out of this world. Nada para tirar cohetes, you say. Mediocre, tirando malo, and bad. Okay. The next one, in absoluto, not at all, is at all. I don't have any money at all. No tengo dinero in absoluto. Ni una peseta, o ni un duro, ni un euro. I don't have any money, not a single euro. Do you have any money? I don't have any money at all. All right. I don't have any free time at all. All right. At all. Agotado. I'm exhausted. Completely exhausted. I'm so tired. I'm worn out. Las dos expresiones más corrientes para cuando estás de verdad agotado es exhausted y worn, como el pasado de llevar puesto. Where, war, worn, igual que bear, bore, born. I was born, I was worn out. And to be worn out, estar agotado, to be worn out. I'm completely worn out, okay? Because to wear, además de llevar puesto, significa gastar o desgastar. Las ruedas de tu coche pueden estar gastados. Las ruedas o desgastadas. You know, I don't know if in Spanish you say gastadas. Las ruedas las tengo gastadas o desgastadas. It's interesting. Uh, both mean more or less the same thing. Now, in English, to wear out the tires. And after the tires have been working for 40,000 kilometers, usually the tires are worn, are worn out. And you personally, after working for 15 straight hours, for 15 hours in a row, for 15 consecutive hours, usually you're, oh, I am very tired. Estoy reventado. I'm really worn out. I'm exhausted, okay? I need to take a rest. I need to go home, take it easy, get a good night's sleep, and then I'll be fresh and ready to go tomorrow morning, okay? But I need a good night's sleep. I need a good night's sleep. Very common expression. Necesito sueño de una buena noche. Qué, qué raro eso. Un buen sueño de una noche. Very strange. A good, a uh, good nights, con apóstrofe S, como si el sueño en cuestión perteneciese a la noche. Pero se dice, I need a good night's sleep. Or when you give some advice to somebody else. Pepe, you need a good night's sleep. Get a good night's sleep tonight, okay? And then tomorrow we'll discuss this problem again with a fresher mentality and will approach the problem probably more quickly and more effectively. But get a good night's sleep because you look exhausted. You look worn out. Okay, go home. Have a light dinner and go to bed and get a good night's sleep. All right. Prometedor, it's promising. Yes, it's very promising to know that you are coming every day. If you come and watch my program every day and possibly other programs on this TV channel, then it's very promising in my opinion. You and your neighbors and other neighbors and people in other cities, could it be possible that we will change the English level in this country, okay, from a very low level on the average to a relatively high level? Can we do it? Listen, this is the only television channel of this type, que yo sepa, as far as I know, and I think I'm right, this is the only television channel of this type in the world. 
you are very fortunate that here in Spain, you are a witness, testigo, you're a witness to a completely innovative revolutionary project in which 24 hours a day, we are teaching you English, you and your compatriots English. And it's an interesting experiment, an experimento muy interesante. Do you think it will work? Do you think myself, I, together with my colleagues on this television channel, do you think we can gradually change the English level in this country? We're going to try. We're going to try. And there's an expression you have in Spanish that no se llega a la categoría de vencido sin haber luchado. Entonces, llamarse vencido no vale si no has luchado. Entonces, eso eleva el concepto de vencido a una categoría, en mi opinión, noble, porque significa que has luchado. So, if we fail in this project, if we fail in transforming Spain into a bilingual or semi-bilingual country, nothing happens. ¿Qué pasa? No pasa nada. Because we have tried very hard. And there's a lot of nobility in the attempt. Okay, so, promising. It's very promising for you, for me, for everybody to have this television station, to have this television channel. Okay, Aprende Inglés TV. It's very promising. And I ask you, to approach this television channel with an open mind, a good heart. Don't be nervous or tense. Relax. Simply give us time. I'm planning to continue on this program for 10 years. Do you think you can learn English in 10 years? I'll, I'll, I guarantee you, if you watch this t television channel one hour a day, five days a week for 10 years. If you're 35 now, you will speak English quite well when you're 45. One hour a day, eh? Which means uh, approximately 300 days or 250 days a year. All right, over 10 years, that's 2,500 days and 2,500 hours. Do you think if you watch me or other people on this, pro on this television st station, do you think in 2,500 hours, we can change your English? I think so. And if you watch us more time and study and do other things on your own initiative, I think you can. All right, we'll see. All right, Prometedor is promising. Propuesta, proposal, hazme una propuesta. Make me a proposal, give me a proposal, pero no do. Okay, entonces aquí hemos visto hasta ahora dos términos Ambos de los cuales los dos exigen make. Hacer una cita o concertar una cita es to make an appointment. Y uh, hacer una propuesta es to make a proposal. Or to draw up a proposal, to prepare a proposal, okay? To write a proposal, to submit, que es someter o presentar, to present a proposal, all right? Satisfecho, satisfied, pleased. If you ask me, my opinion about your progress. You say, Richard, what do you think? What do you think about my project? Or what do you think of my progress or about? Aquí, of y about, ambos valen cuando pides a alguien que opine. What do you think of my progress? What do you think about my progress? Yo personalmente diría about, probablemente. What do you think about my progress? Do you like it? Are you happy with my progress? Yo, de, yo podría decir muchas cosas. I'm delighted. Wow, fantastic. You've progressed tremendously. You've made huge progress. I'm really impressed. I could say, I'm very pleased. Pleased, I'm very pleased with your progress. Se dice mucho, es precioso decirlo. I'm pleased with your progress. I'm satisfied with your progress. Hmm, yeah, estoy satisfecho. Quiere decir que tu progreso ha sido satisfactorio. Your progress has been satisfactory and I'm satisfied, que está bien. Pero es mejor todavía pleased. Como, por favor, con D al final. Placed. I'm pleased. ¿Lo oyes? Pleased with your progress. I'm satisfied with your progress. Or, I'm delighted. Wow, fantástico. Me, me estoy encantado. All right. I hope in the future to be very pleased. In fact, I hope 
that as the days progress, I will be delighted. All right, I'll be back in five minutes. We're going to continue with more of Valgan Vivo, so don't go away. Yeah. 